Hello and welcome to the official Yonex VCourt 95 review. I am your host. You might recognize me from the channel Time for Tennis. You can check me out there if you want to see some more content of my own. But today I am with Courtside Tennis. Be sure to check out courtsidetennis.com where orders over $50 ship for free. So the VCourt 95 boasts some cosmetic changes as well as some physical changes. We're going to go over both real quick. Cosmetically different paint job. You have a red grommet and head guard system as well as opposed to the black one like the previous previous generation had. And up close, you can see some small differences in the mold, such as around the throat and inside of the throat. But most notably, the biggest change in the mold is going to come from the racket head shape around the 10 and the 2 area. Now, this is true across all the V-Core rackets of the newest generation, actually. But the 10 and the 2 area have been expanded or widened out a little bit, which increases the sweet spot size and also increases the stability of the racket a bit, both of which I think are lovely upgrades. Now, this racket compared to the last generation is going to have a slightly higher swing weight. It's also just a little bit heavier with a slightly thicker beam. I find that it's also more able to generate power just a little bit more easily while also being softer, which is interesting. So in a lot of ways, I feel like this racket kind of moves in the direction that I prefer, but it doesn't go so far in that direction that it kind of loses its own identity. And the V-Core 95 is an interesting racket in the V-Core line up because it has the most dense string pattern. This is a 16 by 20 racket and it has the smallest head size. That being said, for a 1620 Yonex, it is actually a somewhat open string pattern, so it is still very spin friendly. I suppose it still belongs in the family of V-Core rackets, but of the rackets in that family, this is going to be the more kind of all around racket and it's going to require a little bit more work from the player. If you're getting this racket, you're probably going to want to be able to generate your own power. You probably want to have some pretty sound technique as well. Because while this racket isn't necessarily hard to use, I definitely wouldn't describe it as being easy to use. And that's kind of the catch with this racket. But if you do have the skills and the firepower to use a racket like this, you will be rewarded with a racket that can kind of do it all. Now this racket, despite the fact that it's a 95, is actually quite stable and it's also very good at generating spin. So if you're able to generate power and spin, this racket will give it to you. All in all, I find this racket to be very satisfying at many positions on the court, from the net to the baseline. I can get the power I need, I can get the spin that I need, I can get the stability and the touch and the feel that I need. It's one of those things where it just kind of comes down to the player being able to give this racket what it needs for you to get what you need from the racket. As I said earlier in the video, I think that this racket is a very solid update from the last generation of V-Cores. I actually might say that for all of them in the V-Core series this time around. I like the paint job. I think the red head guard and grommet system is really cool. I think the fact that they've brought more of the isometric shape back a little bit is also cool. And the fact that this one plays a little bit softer while also being able to deliver a little bit more on the power side and spin side is interesting, but also very welcome. For this play test, this racket was strung with 17 gauge zero by restring, one of my favorite strings of all time. And it was strung up at 46 pounds. And real quick, I would like to say that for this racket, I would recommend probably not going with a gauge as thick as 16. 16 light might even be a little bit questionable. If you're putting a poly in this, I would probably keep it 17 gauge or so, lower if you want to. And if you can, probably keep it below 50 pounds. I find this racket to be relatively string sensitive and it is a 1620 and a 95. So you definitely want to factor that in when you are selecting your string thickness and tension. Now I went 46 pounds with a polyester string in here that's a 17 gauge and if I had a multi-filament or a syngut, I might do the same thing but go up just a few pounds. So that's just my recommendation for you to have the optimal experience if you will with this racket because it is already a pretty low powered frame and it does require some more work than a lot of rackets might to be able to generate the spin and power that a lot of players are looking for. But it's a really solid racket and I am very happy with the updates from the last generation from Yonex. All right, well that's it for this review. If you would like to check out Courtside Tennis, you can go to courtsidetennis.com where orders over $50 ship for free or you can also check out one of the two locations in the Sacramento area where there are many rackets and many demos for you to try, both for tennis and for pickleball. So if you're ever in the Sacramento area, be sure to check us out. But you can always go to courtsidetennis.com and you can check me out at Time for Tennis on YouTube if you would like. All right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video. Bye.